Hey there, are you ready to build a fitness business that becomes a true income producing asset? Then I welcome you to the Fitness Business Freedom Show brought to you by Fitness Revolution. I am your host, Justin Hanover, and we have over 15 years of experience building thriving fitness businesses, and we are committed to sharing our knowledge and expertise with you. You can expect to hear proven business foundations and frameworks, success stories from our coaching partners, and guest experts to give you straight answers for your biggest questions. doesn't matter if you have an online business, fitness facility, or operate as an independent trainer, you are in the right place to grow your business and create the personal freedom you desire. Welcome to today's episode. I'm your host, Justin Hanover, success coach with Fitness Revolution. Now, before we dive into today's episode, I want to share with you who I have joining me and a little bit about what you can expect to hear. Mitch is an enterprise strategic account manager for Trainerize, one of the world's leading fitness engagement platforms, making fitness accessible to millions of people all over the world. In addition, Mitch is also a strategic fitness advisor for the TUT Fitness Group, a high performance portable home gym using time under tension technology that can be assembled and stored almost anywhere. Mitch is a former personal trainer, manager, and general manager for Canada's largest network of personal training studios. During this time, he managed three locations with over 30 employees. So now within our conversation, Mitch shared the power of Trainerize and how it can massively shift you and how you're operating your business from multiple viewpoints. We talked about how Trainerize creates an omni-channel experience, and if you're not sure what that is, then you are really in for a treat. So if you have been holding back with bringing your business into the year 2022, then this episode might just be enough to give you that little extra kick. Let's go ahead and get Mitch on here. Today's episode is brought to you by Fitness Revolution. So you started your fitness business and you've been in the game now for a few years. You might have even seen some good growth over those years, but now you feel stuck. You feel like the momentum you once had just isn't there and you don't know how to get it back. So should you be focusing on your marketing, your sales, or your team? What is the next bottleneck to focus on that will allow you to break the chains holding you back? That is a great question. And one of the biggest skills as an owner is to be able to understand and identify the next biggest issue to keep your business moving. And this is exactly why Fitness Revolution has created our proprietary needs assessment to allow you to quickly see where your business stacks up and receive immediate feedback on what to focus on next. It's a quick 10 question assessment that will be able to provide valuable feedback to get past sticking points and hit your next goal. Whether you are stuck or feeling frustrated with your current progress or just want to dial in what's working, this assessment is the first step to making that happen. I invite you to head over to the show notes where a direct link to the needs assessment will be so you can easily access it there. Now, let's jump into today's show. Mitch, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to spend it with us and and sharing your insights and uh, on everything (laughs) Trainerize. Awesome, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. It's absolutely our pleasure. So I'd like to start with kind of just giving our listeners some perspective. So we're looking kind of twofold here for one for you, like kind of give us perspective of how you became like kind of like the, the Mitch that we're speaking with today. And then if you can uh, kind of segue that into um, a little bit of a, a, a breakdown of Trainerize. Yeah, for sure. So um, yeah, um, I grew up in, in Ontario, Canada. Uh, went to school at York, you know York University. Um, did finish with you know kinesiology and psychology, and and, and got into personal training after um, you know exploring the recreational therapy space where I did my post grad, and um, <clears throat> that's where I really got uh, into into fitness, uh, working with people with acquired brain injuries, and decided I wanted to go you know deeper into that that fitness world. And um, an opportunity came up to move from Ontario to BC, which is across the country two separate ends, uh, to manage a, a gym in a small town. And I, um, you know, took that on with no business experience or really any personal training experience, but, uh, it was just an opportunity, uh, that I just wanted to dive into and take that risk and, um, look like a good challenge. So I uh, went there, that's where I gained, uh, experience really quick, kind of just thrown right into the fire, did all the classes, personal training, uh, you know, gym memberships, all of that. And, 
Um, and then eventually moved down to Vancouver, which is a much bigger city, um, and uh, was managing a couple of personal training studios there, a company called Innovative Fitness. Um, and then I stepped into a general manager role, um, you know, a year later and kind of overseeing the, the, the network of personal training studios there. And, um, you know, from there, I really got to understand the fitness industry and what a lot of the pain points were, right? And a lot of the pain points that are still today for, you know, companies and trainers, and really that's like operating efficiently, talent acquisition, how do we acquire trainers? How do you retain trainers? Um, how do you provide more value to clients and create a continuity across program delivery, uh, workout tracking, all over the place, right? When it comes to that side of the, the fitness industry. And um, that's where I found Trainerize. Um, so I found Trainerize in January of 2020, right before the, the pandemic hit. It was, I mean, unbelievable timing in that sense. I went from brick and mortar to, to software, um, uh, you know, and, and so jumping into Trainerize, what is Trainerize? Who are Trainerize? So our mission at Trainerize is to make fitness accessible. Um, and what we are, we're a B2B uh, member engagement application, right? So it's a club software that really empowers fitness businesses to engage and motivate their clients. Um, and we focus on three areas, fitness, nutrition, and habits. And it's an all-in-one app to deliver that experience uh, to the client. So, you know, we really focus on uh, three different segments. We've got the per individual personal trainer, we got the uh, SMB, small and medium-sized business, one to four locations. And then we have the large enterprise. So we hit all three uh, segments and it allows those businesses to have their own custom branded app, um, have their clients have access to it where they can message, they can deliver their programs, they can track their body stats, um, you know, integrate their wearables, um, kind of that all-in-one fitness solution uh, for the business and for the client to engage with each other um, and, um, yeah, making, making it really more accessible for their clients essentially. So yeah, that was a lot. I, mean, <laughs> yeah, no, I think that that was a great breakdown of like, obviously yourself and your journey and how you've now, yeah. I'm out of curiosity is like a lot of people that work at train rides, are they people like yourself that have come from the fitness industry in some capacity? <clears throat> yeah, I would say, um, a lot of our, in different areas of, at Trainerize, there's definitely a lot of fitness professionals that were in that industry. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a strategic account manager. I, I work with all of our enterprise customers and I came from that fitness background and it's really necessary for that, for that role, right? Cause we're talking to CEOs, you know, trainers, and you really need to understand that in industry. Um, and then we have a lot of, uh, a lot of other people, that are, you know, in, whether it be sales position or support coaches position, a lot of people from the fitness industry that have a passion for fitness. Um, yeah, I would say there's, there's quite a few of us, uh, uh, at trainer eyes, uh, not so much on the developer side, but yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't, we yeah. don't need that there, <laughs> but I think that's a good point to let people know too, that it's, it's coming from people that like, like kind of walked in your path. Um, so that's really, it's like you understand the pain yeah. points and the, the, the limiting factors that they're dealing with. And it, it obviously helps you guys with providing a, a better solution. Yeah. And that's why I'm so passionate about it. Right. Like why well, I love having these conversations. I love talking to businesses and, and in trainers because, you know, I was in that, in their shoes, I was a trainer, I was a manager, I was a general manager. So, so kind of like, you know, all different aspects of the business, I got to experience it all. And that's why I like love doing what I do every day. I can get to come in here, you know, talk to trainers, tell them how they're, you know, it's going to really, um, you know, their, their day to day is just going to be easier and easier because you're just taking things di digital. You have like a whole library of workouts and programs that are now, you know, continuity across your entire brand. Um, I remember being a trainer and going in and, and again, coming no experience. And what did I spend the most time doing? Programming. Because, you know, it's, you know, you, it's, a, it's one of those things that you just don't easily, easily pick up, right? So yeah. what Trainerize allows you to do is have your top programmers, your top trainers develop these program templates. So as a new trainer coming in, you actually have something to work with right away. And you have a level of standard of quali quality that's going to be expected. But now you could actually focus on actually training the client right away instead of sitting there for hours trying to figure out how to program. Because let's be, let's be real. It's, it's all about connecting with the, with the client, 
you know, motivating them, de- what, demo- what demotivates them, you know, how do you cue them properly? All those soft skills are so important, especially at the beginning as a trainer, where, you know, as a business, you can now speed up trainer onboarding with just digitizing your services, uh, essentially. So, um, yeah, true. I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's absolutely huge, especially obviously for the gym owners that have teams. I mean, we all know how, like, no, I, I think I, no matter how like systematized um, you have your onboarding process, it's still it, it, you're dealing with people at the end of the day. It's, it's, there's always parts of it that are unpredictable. So, I mean, like if you implement something like this, that takes away some of um, the, the unpredictability of it. Uh, that definitely makes the, the experience better for everyone. And, and like you said, then it takes pressure off of that new trainer to perform in a certain way and allows that new trainer to focus on integrating into the culture and connecting mm. with people. Uh, yeah. Because like, that's, that's like, that's most important first. Cause obviously if that trainer can't is so focused on other things, like isn't allowing them to connect with people. Uh, it doesn't matter how good the programming is. It's not going to resonate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and what's one of the biggest pain points right now in the industry, it's, it's talent acquisition, it's trainer acquisition, mm-hmm. people acquiring trainers. It's, it's more difficult than ever before right now. So yeah. put yourself in the trainer shoes. You're going from gym to gym and, and interviewing. If they have a tool for you to use to program better workout tracking, uh, you know, message your client, provide habits, have a nice grid to see who has a program, who doesn't have a program, who needs to be followed up on, um, you know, pre-scheduling automated messages that are going out. So you don't have to worry about, you know, sending a happy birthday to doing a client check in, Mm -hmm. like, you know, which gym are you, which gym are you going to go with one that you know is doing, you know, a glorified Excel sheet, or one that, you know, allows you to, you know, create a program in under 10 minutes. Um, yeah. So I think it's, it's really big for businesses when you got to start thinking about like, Hey, it's 2022, it's time to digitize your services. So we, we haven't jumped into like what, you know, COVID was and how that impacted the business. But when COVID hit, people just needed to take their business online. They couldn't obviously come to the gym and experience their services. So we obviously, you know, we do online really well. Um, we also do in person really well, which we can touch on later, but, um, we always had a big, you know, big jump in, in business, but what we saw in, in what COVID came out of is all of these different kind of channels that people were consuming fitness, right? So then the Pelotons that came out the, um, you know, Apple fitness plus, um, you have all of these different app overloads, right? My fitness pal, like you go Nike running club on and on. And it just exploded. The, fit, the, the, the digital fitness just exploded. Mm. And now as we come out of the pandemic, we're really seeing, um, you know, fitness businesses, like people are going back to the gym. That's, that's definitely happening. But there's still people that have developed habits of like, whether it be training at home or whatever the case may be. And what Trainerize as a tool can provide is to not compete with these different channels, but embrace them and create, a, a program and structure uh, around all of these d- these different channels, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. And you said that, and that is like you said, like an enticing, a way to bring in higher level talent, um, mm-hmm. so that they know that they can perform at a higher level. And also, it's quality of life for them too. Like <laughs> it, it's it totally really does improve the quality of their life. Um, that happens, like you said, uh, it be strapped to different uh, Google Sheets or documents and stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Less admin time, right? Like, yes. Do what they love doing, and that is training that's what they came to do this job for, right? They love training um, clients. And if you have less admin time, admin time, you're going to obviously spend time doing that, but the business mm. less overhead, right? You don't have to do the, provide these programming hours that are, you know, X amount of hours per day. So uh, I think everybody wins in the long run there. Definitely. So I, I do want to like now press in a little more. You mentioned the COVID situation. Mm. So mm-hmm. let's start with uh, kind of diving in there of like um, maybe kind of like what the landscape looked like right before COVID and then how things pivoted for you guys during it. Yeah. Um, and now obviously where we're at now. <laughs> for sure. For sure. I mean, pre COVID we were, we already are growing company. We already have 50% year over year growth. Um, uh, you know, as it was just because the, the need for, uh, you know, digitizing your, 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 your services and online coaching was already growing. But then when the pandemic hit, it was like, like a hockey stick, mm-hmm. right. It just went, 
um, you know, skyrocketed and we went to hundred percent, you know, year over year growth. And uh, because a lot of, a lot of businesses obviously needed to take their business online and we, we were the solution for that, right? You can deliver your programs online. You can do video calling on through the app. So virtual personal training, you could take those sessions uh, online, nutrition, um, you know, habits, uh, on-demand classes. We have that functionality as well. So we had everything that was needed during the COVID time. Um, and, you know, as we, as we kind of scaled out of, out of that, um, you know, we did see things start to even out a bit, we're, but we're still growing. And now the solution is, is really digitized, but getting back to our, to our mission of like making fitness successful and digitizing services. So clients can easily, you know, talk with their trainer, um, you know, view their program in their app, um, you know, go in there, upload a progress photo, track their body stats. So now it's back to, okay, digitizing businesses services. So taking your business on. So it's a little bit about that hybrid model. So you hear that term a lot now, mm-hmm. right? It's like, that's the biggest thing right now, I would say is that the hybrid model and the, this omni-channel experience, those two is really what's taking off, uh, you know, post, uh, post COVID, post COVID, because again, people have got into these habits. Um, some people are, they want that flexibility to either do online or in person. And that's exactly what that hybrid model provides. Yeah. No, that, that makes sense. So, I mean, is that, um, has that like altered like anything that, that you guys offer within the platform? Um, or is anything, I guess, new come to light with how you guys, uh, offer your service from the COVID situation? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think it's, it's worth okay, so understanding a little bit more about the hybrid and omni-channel model and, and how trainer is kind of fits into that. So Absolutely. the hybrid, the hybrid model, right. You got two methods of coaching. You got in-person and then you got online coaching that, that is a combination of, uh, that gives you hybrid. So obviously the in-person and then online coaching, meaning like you can deliver workouts to somebody that they're maybe doing at home or on vacation. Maybe you're doing a virtual personal training session through the video calling platform. Maybe you gave them an on-demand class to do like, that online coaching and then in-person combined because you, they're still coming in to see you, but they're still getting some online options. So that's a bit of hybrid. Now, delivering that hybrid service is through the omni-channel experience. So people are consuming fitness in so many different ways now, right? We talked about Peloton, you know, Apple Fitness Plus. Maybe they're going to do a class, uh, on-demand class. Maybe they're you know, running or whatever, they're consuming in all these different ways. And what Trainerize allows you to do is create a program around their lifestyle. So you sit down with them and you have a consultation like you do normally, and you're understanding, okay, you're going to come, you want to train with me maybe once or twice a week in person. All right. What do you have at home? Do you, do you have a, you know, a squat rack at home? Do you have a, you know, a Peloton? Uh, or you like to go to a class on this day, you like to run on this day, you're collecting all that information. And now you can actually create a holistic program and, and structure for them. Because what are they coming to you for the first place? They want structure, they want accountability. So that's where we're seeing personal trainers, the great ones separate themselves, is embracing all of these channels, not competing. Don't do Peloton, don't do this, don't come train with me. It's more like, oh, that's, that's awesome. Let's build a program around this. Let's schedule this on your calendar, fitness class. Let's schedule um, you know, a running activity and set some targets for you in heart rate zone and distance. And then once you start it in the app, it, it triggers your wearable. And now I can see that data coming in and give you some coaching advice based on that data from your wearable. So it's like this omni-channel experience, is, it's embracing it, not, not competing with it. Um, because I think in the long run, we want people to be active. We want them to be, you know, become healthier. It's just what people lack structure, a program and accountability. That's what, you know, the personal training industry has done so well for so many years. Right. I love that. I mean, that's actually like, I think that, that, that definitely is an approach that needs uh, to mm-hmm. get bigger. Cause I think I know from like even my time you know, years ago when I had my facility, it, it really wasn't, like that it was definitely very much like everyone was very like catty and competitive uh, yeah. in the sense of like oh no you can't do that or you shouldn't be doing that or that online program's a joke or or that at home thing doesn't work or all this stuff and it was very much like, like you have to do this and it was it was almost this sense where you can feel 
like if you told someone not to do something, um, but it was something that they like, it was like they got it, it created friction there. Uh, yeah. And so yeah. now that, and it, you almost kind of push them more towards that uh, mm-hmm. because I mean, that's what I mean, it's kind of human behavior. We tend to want to do what someone tells us not to do Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, type of thing. So that's, I, I like that approach that you guys are helping people be able to embrace all those different aspects and not see it as a, a threat, but see it as a, a bonus um, and a, a better way of providing a service. And you can't do that without technology. Like everything I just I mentioned to you there, like creating that structure in that program, how do you how do you how do you deliver that without the appropriate tool? Like you, you, everybody, every every trainer has their own modality. Maybe they're sending YouTube videos. Maybe they're doing Excel sheets. Maybe they're printing it out. Maybe it's pen and paper. Like there's no continuity across. It takes so much time. So um, I, I think you know you need the right tool to be able to do that. But I going circling back a little bit is that the PT world was really just focused on selling sessions, mm-hmm. sessions, 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 like 10 sessions, 12 sessions. And that was it. Now with technology, you have a tool to sell an entire program, right? We always mm-hmm. said that like, Oh yeah, I know. Well, you know, come here and put together a program for you, but we didn't never really did it really well because we didn't have the technology or the tools to do it. But now you actually, can put together an entire program based on their lifestyle and, and get it and, and actually charge for it and, and pay your, your trainers uh, appropriately for it. Because if you have this type of tool that you're and selling this entire beautiful customized program, you can charge more. Right. And, mm-hmm. and that's going to allow your trainers to actually put in the time to structure this program, schedule it for them. Um, and it allows you to also build different service offerings. Right. So you can, my biggest pain point, one of my biggest pain points was those one time a week personal training clients, right? You get, <laughs> you get those one time a week. What do they want? They want workouts for the other five or six days yep. <laughs> type of the week. And then you got to be, you know, getting your trainers to build that. How are they doing it? How are they delivering it? Train The clients are never happy because they don't like reading this off an Excel sheet or however it's being delivered. So what this allows you to do now is one provide a quality for your uh, level of standard that you're delivering to your, to your clients. And it's consistent across all your, all your locations. The client is getting better value. And now you can actually charge based on how many workouts you, you deliver to them. So, okay, you're coming in with me one time a week. You want X amount of workouts on these days. So if you're doing, uh, you know, one workout with me in person, we're going to obviously charge for that session. Um, and then the two other workouts we're delivering to is an, an additional cost at this much, um, but you can kind of sell it as a program per se, mm. but you can make tiered pricing based on how many workouts you're delivering to them outside of, outside of the gym, whether that be something they're doing at home with their own equipment. Uh, maybe it's, you know, a, a cardio type of uh, activity that you're programming for them for. Um, so it allows you so many different ways and then you can create tiers as well. So in the app, you have uh, messenger capabilities, right? Just like WhatsApp or iMessage. So um, maybe you're training with them once, uh, one time a week, or even once a month for for that. Um, but you've delivered them a program through the app that they can do at their home, and you you have maybe weekly touch points through the messenger tool in the app. Um, maybe a higher tier is that you get 24 hour access to your trainer, where you get you know more touch points, or you have an in app video calling once a week where you can, you know, touch base and, and go over your program. Um, so there's different ways you can kind of tier this type of offering, you know? Definitely. And like you said, it really allows them to have a proper service and then be able to charge for their time and everything that's going into it. Cause I think like mm-hmm. before like your trainers had a, a good tool for this, um, like when, like you said, like that one tra- that one person that comes one time a week and then they wants workouts for the rest of the days. A lot of times, like trainers are like, yeah, yeah, I'll just give it to you, and like then they just give them workouts to do whatever, and like don't actually charge for it, but they're still yep. putting time into it. And then obviously, we know that's not a scalable thing, and you can never have um, if you're the owner doing that, then you can never have anybody else do it because they won't do it for free. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so it, like you kind of just like strap yourself to your business, uh, it basically. So this really allows you to. Um, 
like a charge appropriately, but then also too, I think it also makes it very, it, it makes something intangible, more tangible um, it, because it allows the client to, I think, really understand what it is that they're, that they're paying for and what they're getting. Um, mm-hmm. Or I think that's kind of always been some of the, the pain point of like in the years past of selling training, it's like you're selling thin air um, it, because there's, there's nothing to really show for it. Obviously it's just mm-hmm. like selling this belief of, of this idea of what could be. Um, mm-hmm. But I think, I feel mm-hmm. like this is now it, it, it makes something um, that isn't there there um, and it makes it more real um, for that person to be able to see like, okay, like this makes sense now. And it, and, and be able to tie the value to it a lot better. Mm-hmm. And setting expectations, right? Like oh, absolutely. That, that, that's, that's a big thing too. And you always saw those trainers, the best trainers were doing these things already. Um, Mm. it just took a a lot of work, a lot of time. Um, but they, 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 you know, they understood, like, I always found that like the top trainers were doing this stuff already, but, but like you said, you couldn't put a price point around it. You couldn't, you know, compensate properly. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a game changer in that sense for sure. Definitely. I, I, I think, like I said, it just brings, um, I kind of like the training space into a, a different, a more relatable category. And like how, like, like say like you can, um, whatever, like you go to, let's say another type of service business, like even, um, I don't know, like an accounting business, let's say. Uh, mm-hmm. And like they can, they're able to like itemize and like show you, okay, like this is the service. This is the price. This is what we get. This is the price. This is, and, and like, there's no like kind of, mystery to what they're getting and what they're paying for. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think that can, is what causes some pain points uh, for people, especially the clients understanding what they're paying for and pushing back on price because it's uh, in most cases, like people, like, sometimes people are kind of just winging it uh, yeah. when it comes to, to pricing and there's no real actual structure uh, to it and understanding how they're pricing and uh, what they're actually pricing for. Uh, so I think this definitely it makes that a lot easier for both parties. Yeah. And I, and I think also ease of functionality too is, is I mentioned before app overload, right? Like if mm. they're coming to, if they're coming to your gym um, and you have a one app experience for them where they can communicate with their trainer, view their program, upload their progress photos, track their body stats, you know, uh, track meals in the app, uh, track their habits in the app, they're thinking fitness, they're thinking your gym, they're thinking, you know, your brand, your company, your trainer. Um, that's what, that's what they, that's what another big, um, benefit of, of technology allows you to do, right. They have their wearable, whether it's Apple watch, Fitbit, you know, Samsung health Garmin, those sync into the app. So again, it's all of that data is going into the app, creating that one app experience, um, groups, for example, like everybody uses Facebook groups in the fitness industry. You know, we created a functionality in, in Trainerize that is uh, you can actually have groups inside the app where people are engaging with each other, interacting, and it's fitness augmented where you can set challenges and pr- have programs attached to it, um, really eliminating external apps. Um, that's what we've done with our nutrition set. Like we do integrate with like MyFitnessPal, but, you know, you could actually do in-app meal tracking in the app. Um, you know, we tried to eliminate video platforms, which is like, you know, Zoom, where you can actually have, you know, a video call inside the app. It's, um, we noticed that, you know, a lot of fitness businesses are using a million different pieces of technology um, to, and it's just not manageable. Um, so I think, um, you know, technology also allows you to, to scale your business, um, you know, a lot, a lot better, more efficiently in that sense. And it's the, the client experience has just like changed dramatically from, you know, what it was before too. Oh, definitely. Uh, was the um is the the in app video um messaging uh, uh, calls is that something new where you guys added? Yeah, no. We uh, so when when COVID hit, we went deep on video. Right, people needed to um, you know take their their personal training like they were doing it through Zoom. So, but we wanted to create that in app experience. So we created a video platform in there where you can you know, have one-to-one video calls. We're just releasing group video calls soon as well, where you can, you know, have a group video, like small group training type of call in there, but the other was pre-recorded. So like kind of that on-demand. So people for like having their classes, okay, let's, let's record these classes and provide them to, to our clients to do, 
you know, in the app. So we went deep on video during COVID. Um, and, um, you know, coming out of that, um, we've kind of just going back to, uh, you know, our mission to, to make fitness successful. So we're, we're kind of, you know, putting more wearables into the equation. We have a really good relationship with Apple where we actually developed a, you know, an Apple watch app. So businesses will have their own customized, you know, Apple watch app. So where they can go into their Apple watch, start a cardio activity or you know, view their program, view their personal training appointments, complete their habits, um, you know, kind of, again, creating that, that, uh, that mindset of like, Oh, I'm thinking fitness. Okay. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, X name of, of gym kind of deal. Right. Mm-hmm. So um, that's kind of where we're going and we're just, we're an engagement platform. So anything that really engages with the trainer and the client or the company and the client around fitness, nutrition, and habits is, is our, is our, um, you know, is our, is our, our main objective. Definitely. Yeah. So it seems like, like you guys obviously really are like engagement, but also you're creating a certain experience and you're then allowing the trainer or the coach or the business to create a certain experience um, and control the experience and the interaction a lot more. Like I was trying to, I was related to like, um, like kind of Disney in that sense. Like, so you're creating that Disney effect um, of making sure that any type of touch point that's happening with that business is as they want it to be like, so it's, it's a controlled touch point in that sense. So it's mm. not leaving anything to chance, um, mm-hmm. which is yeah. which was what would happen before, obviously with having to use multiple different platforms or, or different apps. Um, and I know like even my, I, that's what I used to do. Um, and it, it was always that, that look of pain on, on the client's face would be like, are you serious? I have to download like three apps and yeah. you know, this, this, and, this, and it's like, hey, you, I, you know, it sucks, but yeah, yeah. like, what else are you going to do? So it's like, <laughs> yeah, there's no other offering it, it, totally. And I think, um, you know, also when it comes to client acquisition, we're talking a lot about like this provides value for retaining your clients. Um, but also when it comes to like acquiring and monetizing your clients, having an app like this. So let's use the, the, the typical gym, for example, where you have gym memberships, um, you have classes and you have, you know, personal training, for example, being able to provide access to an app for all of your clients that they have access to is just increases your sales funnel massively, Mm -hmm. where you can then upsell them to different services inside of the app. Right. So maybe uh, I come in, I just want to get a basic gym membership. Uh, during my you know initial intake consultation, when I go to our uh, signing up for the app, I you know want to do my goal is weight loss. So I go into the app. I have this weight loss program, all of these exercise videos that kind of gives me a tour around the gym, where you know I'm engaging with different aspects of the gym. Maybe it's uh, the, the weights one day, maybe it's the floor mats the other day, um, and you're actually getting you know a basic program that you can do digitally from your phone and because education is the biggest barrier for people when they, you know, go to a gym. So being able to have that education and be it branded, it's a massive value add. And, and then from there, it's like, Oh, awesome. Um, you got a notification of, um, you want, you know, try a complimentary personal training session. You start messaging your trainer through the app. The trainer gives you more of a customized program in the app. And it's just like, okay, that's a massive, kind of upselling strategy, um, you know, to the app. So I, we're, we're, that's what I love doing is kind of talking with businesses and, 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 mm. and I'm sure you, you guys do this very well. You're a business, uh, business coach, right? So um, having those conversations of like, Hey, these are the opportunities now that you can really scale your business uh, inside your gym, but also outside of the gym, out the, outside the four walls of your gym as well. Um, those are always just really fun conversations to have. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, especially you get to that place where you are on focus on scaling and then it's, it's, it's ha- having fun and, and like looking at like ways that you're able to tweak um, what's working and, and enhance it. So it, <clears throat> basically from the, the user's perspective, does this basically look like, um, like the training facility or a personal trainer's app is, is basically what it comes across as? Yeah. So we have different levels of branding, right? So with the three segments, we got the, the personal trainer, the independent personal trainer. Then we have the SMB, small, medium sized business one to four, and then enterprise, which is five locations up to hundreds and hundreds of locations. Um, so there's different levels of branding in that sense where, you know, with more studio and enterprise, you get your own in-app store listing. Um, you know, so for example, if I, 
was a, was a studio or a large enterprise and it was, you know, Mitch's gym, for example, I would be looking up the, in the app store, Mitch's gym. It wouldn't be trainerized. It wouldn't be anything mm -hmm. like that. So they had their own yeah. very custom branded experience. Um, and then you get deeper level of customization in there when it comes to like badges and like animations and icons. So you're getting a nice, it's really falling in line with your brand. Um, whereas with the, the pro it's a bit less branded. You don't get your own in-app store listing. Um, they're searching up trainer eyes. Uh, but when the client logs into the app for the first time, the app icon switches to that independent personal trainers logo, uh, for example. Um, so it's a bit less, less customization, but yeah, the client experience, right. Is you get, you get added to the app as either a client from a PT or gym as a member. And you have a certain experience based on what you signed up for. Um, so if you if you signed up for personal training, you're going to have access to messaging your trainer. Where if you're just a you know a member, for example, you can that we can flag that off where they don't have two way. There's no messaging capability, but they're able to view a program, for example. They're able to you know upload a progress photo or track their body stats. Um, but based on the client's journey, we can create different visuals in the app based on what they signed up for. Maybe it's nutrition. Okay. That's a different look in the app. Maybe it's, it's habit coaching. That's a different look. Maybe it's PT. That's a different look. If maybe you're general, you're just a, a member, you're going to have a different look and feel, and then you can upsell them into different services, uh, you know, within that. Okay. No, that's awesome. Cause I mean, like the whole time I'm like, wow. I mean, like this is, I think the only way, the way you can get something like this is, if you actually pay a developer to build your own app. Um, <laughs> and even at yeah. that, I would argue that it probably wouldn't be as good because he wouldn't, again, we, we, like what we talked about before we um, earlier on and before we recorded, it was the, the how, how you guys have access to so much data and so quickly. Uh, obviously that helps with getting it right or closer to right the first time uh, yeah, yeah. versus somebody singly trying to build something and, and it's, it's a much uh, slower process. <laughs> Yeah, we actually started as a BlackBerry app, believe it or not, <laughs> back in uh, back in two thousand and eight. Um, we started oh, wow. we started as a BlackBerry app, and it was really just delivering exercises through the application, just like an exercise, and you could track that. Um, and then, obviously, when the iPhone came out around, I think it was two thousand. Uh, I forget the year twelve. Um, yeah, we cool, yeah. yeah we we pivoted and really tailored more towards the personal trainer, um, and but. Uh, but yeah, pretty, I always like, it's, it's interesting. You know, we were BlackBerry app at one point yeah. and, um, <laughs> it really started with, um, like Sh Sherrod, our, our CEO, um, he got into a burn accident, uh, back in, in the, in the two thousands and his physio, um, was giving him, you know, pen and paper of uh, physio exercises to do. And he was just like, Whoa, what the heck is this? Like, how am I going to do this? So I really sparked the idea of like, Hey, we need to create something here more digitally and make it more accessible for, for people to use. And then, yeah, like we mentioned, we transitioned to, to, to the independent trainer in 2012. Um, and then as the years went on, we um, realized like this type of functionality is actually very, very useful for brick and mortar businesses. So mm. um, that's how we kind of transitioned, started with the independent trainer and then brick and mortar. Uh, and now we service, you know, the largest enterprises, uh, you know, in the industry. Wow. Yeah. No, that was, it sounds like it really has, it's becoming like almost like the pulse of a business. Um, and mm -hmm. like, and, I, and you guys can handle like it billing and everything right through the app too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Actually. So, uh, when, when, uh, we have our own little e-commerce, we have our e-commerce system in the app built on Stripe and that is more for like that independent personal trainer to kind of run and manage their business. They can sell session packs and sell programs and, uh, you know, those type of products. But as you get into the SMB and enterprise, um, that's where we, we integrate with the best of the best, like, you know, the mind body, uh, mm -hmm. for example. Um, and then during COVID, we actually got acquired by ABC fitness solutions. So ABC financial at the time that you're rebranded to ABC fitness. And that's more about the member management, right? The scheduling, the billing, mm -hmm. um, all of that platform. So we've actually created with ABC since the acquisition in 2020, this total fitness experience. So just picture, one app, one experience where a client comes in, they can go to inside the app, barcode, scan, in, scan into the club. They can um, you know, manage their payments, update the credit card. They can book into a class. They can book into their PT sessions. 
on top of everything that I just talked about here today, what trainer eyes can do and mm. view their program, talk with their trainer, um, you know, upload their progress photo with body stats. We just added on this member management layer of that aspect of the fitness business to create that one in total fitness experience for the member. Uh, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, you said, it just makes it, it just makes a better experience for everyone. Cause like then if, um, cause there's nothing more annoying than like, like, okay, they, you can do 90% of what you need to do in the app, but then you have to go and do everything else on the, on the, on the desktop or something like that. Um, yeah. and so it's just, uh, it, it's just, you're just leaving chance for confusion or, um, and what I call it, call it like little micro traumas. Um, yep. and it just causes more the headache or frustration. So like, then something, if you guys can minimize that, uh, as much as possible, then it, it just, again, it just brings it back to that experience feel and, and it allows for a better experience with the, the less, uh, headaches you have to deal with or come up. Yeah. Yeah. I think the client, client experience, right. Is, 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 uh, is, is huge in the sense and kind of where we're going is even more exciting because you talked about it a second ago, like data is, is really crucial. Um, imagine now you have this app and you're collecting all this data, barcode scan and accesses, messages being sent between trainer and client, programs, workouts being completed, habits being completed, meals being tracked, like all of this is now trackable and we're building this kind of... Uh, um, what's it called the analytics type of platform where all of this funnels into, and you can build out reports on, for example, like this person's uh, membership retention is tied to, you know, how many workouts they're being completed per day in the app, how many meals are being tracked. Um, and you can create all of these different client journeys and tie it to, to revenue. Um, so uh, being able to put that into a nice clear picture for, you know, a company to the company to see is really, I, I nerd out over data and analytics. And I think, um, you know, this type of platform is going to allow AI capabilities, you know, understanding human behavior uh, in the app where, what are they clicking on uh, the most? How can we, uh, you know, impact their habits more efficiently by assigning them a habit based on their behavior in the app. Uh, so I think the, you know, the possibilities are really, really endless, but don't get me wrong. We never want to eliminate the, the human aspect and the, the mm. trainer connection because we don't think that's ever going anywhere. We just want to make it easier for trainers to make better coaching decisions. Right. Mm. Um, so if AI allows us to do that, which I think it will be, it'd be a, yeah. it'd be a game changer for sure. You know, yeah. And I would say like, it just enhances the, the human interaction aspect and kind of covers their blind spot basically. Uh, Cause I mean, like there's obviously like, there's no way you can possibly be on the person all the time, but if you're, if like this app and this, uh, the AI technology is able to kind of pick up the slack in the areas that you're not able to. Um, yeah. And like you said, to kind of fill those gaps and then uh, that's, uh, that's huge. I mean, there's yeah. huge potential with that. So, I mean, is that the kind of like main, like the big direction that you guys are pushing in moving forward and where you see things going in, in the industry industry? Yeah, I, I think um, the biggest area of opportunity for us is still that brick and mortar um, uh, segment, just because even though, you know, the, the industry has had a big spike in digital, I do think a lot, a, a lot, a lot of companies and small, medium size and large enterprises are still doing things with pen and paper. They're still, mm. you know, you know, however they're delivering their client and experience is very in inconsistent. There's no continuity. Um, so th we still think that is a biggest area of opportunity and we're going to grow in those areas to, to help make things easier for that, whether that be like, you know, trainer scores or, or location-based scoring based on usage in the app, um, you know, program pickers where they can, you know, clients can potentially, uh, you know, just pick and choose what program they want and swap out programs they want with, without, um, you know, having, uh, with, without a trainer assigning it to them for that general membership type of um, scenario. Um, mm. So we're looking at all of these different areas and, and we're assessing where the industry is going, but um I think that AI component we are going to be releasing uh, later on uh, in the year is, is uh, the photo recognition for uh, meals, you know, for, you know, they take a photo of your meal and it automatically, you know, calculates your macros uh, for you, for example. So that's, that's one area where we're going. Love that. And I also, I couldn't agree more with that's probably the biggest, uh, 
growth for you guys because like it's, I, I talked to a lot of gym owners and and of course and I would say the majority of them still are making things more difficult than it has to be let's put it that way <laughs> right yeah 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 and it's hard like change management's tough right when it, whenever it comes to like you're changing your your let's your workout modality like just getting trainers to to adapt to that change is tough never mind technology so it is kind of like an overtaken can be overwhelming thing technology um but what we do really well is is we you know what that's what my job is and what i would say my zone of genius is is to understand the business's use case understand how they currently operate today and take that use case and translate it into the app without getting into the minutia of everything else the app does because if you just if i give you a demo on what the app does you're going to be like holy smokes man like what the heck so it's yeah. really dialing in that use case. What's the goal? What's the mission? What do you want to achieve here? Um, so I, I would say that's an important piece to what we do really well. Yeah, yeah I was just going to ask you about that too, because I mean, it's great if you have all this this power that you of what mm. you can do, but it doesn't help if obviously if it's not easy for the person to do it or um, to jump in and, and uh, get acclimated uh, to it. And that's something that like you know, I know myself like I've stopped myself from using some software in the past once I found out that I would have to go to an actual school for two months to use it. <laughs> and I was like that's ridiculous <laughs> yeah yeah I don't have time for that yeah um, so you would say like I, I love your approach though with it of how like it's it's about it's like yes it, the app has all these or the platform has all these uh, capabilities but let's focus on what you need it for and, and making sure that it's uh, applicable to you. Uh, so that way, obviously the, the usability starts happening and then if they need to start expanding from there, they can. Yeah. I don't think it starts with leadership. So, hmm. you know, the most successful adoption of the app or the most successful use cases I can tell you about is when leadership is involved right from the top. Um, and, you know, there's actual accountability and adoption and evangelists. So, you know, give you a quick uh, rundown of what a, you know, an onboarding experience would look like for, a, you know, a large gym change. You know, I, you'd be working with me. I'd be working with, you know, maybe the COO or, and, and some of the key stakeholders of the company, whether it be VP or, um, you know, president of uh, fit, uh, VP of uh, personal training, um, you know, all of the key stakeholders of the project. And we would develop this use case. Okay, what do you guys want to use this for? Personal training? Okay, how do we want the, the, the trainers to build the programs uh, in the app? Because there's a lot of different ways you can build programs in the app. How do we want the trainers delivering nutrition through the app? Do we want them delivering meal plans? No? All right, we're not going to talk about that. Do we want them to assign daily nutritional goals? Okay, yes, we're going to talk about that. The habits, how do we want them to deliver habits? Okay, so we're gonna. So once we develop this use case and then create the content in the app, such as like programs, workouts, exercise videos, all of that is going to be ready to go before we even train the trainers on how to use it. Okay, so once we develop this nice, beautiful use case around your business model, we can then hand it over to our implementation specialist to train the trainers on like, hey, this is how you're going to be using the app. This is what your expectations are. Um, you know, don't worry about this section. So it's really just like making it really easy for the trainers to understand and then setting expectations of like, okay, you can't, you don't need to add all your clients on the app right now. Cause uh, that's going to be a huge, huge overhaul for you trying to learn this system. First, add yourself as a client, put your own program on there, put your own workout on there, go through the experience of what it's like. And then by, you know, this date, maybe a month or two months have X amount of clients in the app. Really, really like easing the trainers into it because we know how trainers are. They all love what they do and have their own way. And um, so if you can have evangelists at each location as well, ones that are really high adopters of the app to be those leaders, um, that's where we've seen the most successful is right from the leadership level, then at each location, have an evangelist and, and really setting up the proper use case for that business. I love that. It, it, it makes sense. And, and and what about from maybe we just touch on uh, quickly? Um, it's just from like say like the smaller user perspective, either like a small uh, single location or even yep. an independent trainer. Like what's like kind of like the onboarding experience for them? Yeah, no, that's a it's it's a great question. So we do, you know, we provide this thirty day 
free trial for, for anyone. It could be an independent trainer. It could be, a, you know, you can sign up on the website right now and, 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 uh, and go through it. And you put in information of like, are you an independent trainer? You know, are you, you know, a manager? So we're able to collect that information and, and provide you the right educational material based on, on, on who you are. And we do, when you log in, have, uh, the ability for, uh, tutorial videos on how to use things, how to build programs, how to, you know, message your clients, how to provide nutritionally, everything that you, you click on, there will be a tutorial to understand how to do that. Now, obviously, once you get into like small, medium sized business enterprise, like you get an account manager, you get an onboarding specialist, mm. you have that higher touch. Um, but for, you know, that independent personal trainer signing up, we have that kind of self-serve um, model where, you know, we have a, you know, a help center We we have tons of articles. We have a Vimeo page that have a ton of videos um, to allow the trainer to be set up for success in that way. Above it. I think that's what it's all about. I mean, and that's, it's, I think it's, it speaks well to the, the, the trainer or like the independent uh, gym owner, because I mean, like that's what they're trying to basically do. They're doing the same exact thing for their clients. Um, yep. So I think that's a, like I said, it's just a wonderful full circle experience that you guys are, are providing. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, and this has been an amazing conversation, Mitch. I mean, I really enjoyed your, your time and, and uh, being able to share uh, your expertise around the platform and how it applies to today and in the future. Uh, and as we work towards wrapping up the conversation, uh, one of the, the questions I mentioned to you before we hopped on here was I want to get your insight on like from perspective of uh, having like either an independent trainer or a, a gym owner coming to you for support. Um, what, based on your background, what you do, like what do you feel is uh, the most valuable thing for that person to hear? Yeah, I, I think. That's a great question. Thanks for obviously having me on. It's been, it's been awesome talking shop. I love, I love this. Hopefully you can see my, my passion in it, but uh, I think um, really this hybrid omni channel experience, it's, it's becoming the expectation of the consumer, right? So they're expecting to have this flexibility of uh, maybe I want to go to the gym today. Maybe I want to do this. Maybe I want to do that. Maybe like being able to offer that, is going to be critical to businesses success in the future because yes, people are going to come back to the gym, but the other people that are not, how are you, you know, targeting them? How are you, you know, providing services to them? Um, so that's my, would be my kind of biggest advice is, is really to, you know, edu educate yourself around this hybrid omni channel type of experience. What are your current systems and operations today? How are you delivering that? Um, and what do you need to get there? And, and then technology is a major piece of that. It's not the only piece, but it is a major piece. Um, so that would kind of be my, uh, you know, my advice to, to all, all three segments, independent personal trainer, small, medium size enterprise. It's like, it's 2022. If you don't start digitizing your services and, and it's, it's, you're just going to be left behind. Mm. I, I couldn't agree more. And I think that's a, a, a solid way to, to wrap up this conversation. And I just want to like, thank you again, Mitch, for your time. And, and as like your, like you said, your passion and dedication to this space and it's how it's impacting uh, trainers and gym owners. So we appreciate you for doing that. No, thank you, man. I really appreciate your time. And uh, it was a ton of fun. Absolutely. So for those that are listening that like are intrigued by this and want to in engage more, um, mm -hmm. where's the, where's the best place for them to go? Like say, if they have questions, um, it's a, I'm like, what's the, the next step for them? Yeah. Yeah. No. So definitely, like I mentioned, go right to our website, trainerize.com can sign up a 30 day trial right on that main page just to kind of understand and get a feel of what it is. Uh, we have a help center, um, you know, as well, uh, help.trainerize.com. Um, we have a Vimeo page where you can see some videos of some of the features. We have a ton of webinars on there that we've done, ex you know, with, you know, great guests and, and that are talking about their experience, how they grew their business uh, with trainer eyes. Um, so those three areas uh, would be great. Obviously follow us on Instagram uh, and Facebook as well. Um, and if you have any questions for me, you know, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. That's all. That's the only place where I'm at. Um, just Mitch Malandrino and, uh, you know, I'd love to connect and, and uh, you know, talk about your business. 
Excellent. And, uh, and I do hope that you guys reach out if you feel inclined at all, or if you're one of those ones that we're, we're talking about that are kind of stuck in the stone age a little bit, uh, is that take that time to really explore this, this opportunity and this option, or like I said, or if you, you feel like you want to connect with Mitch even more, reach out to him. Like, let's do those things. I mean, like that's where opportunities are created and, and, and doors open up is when you, you just take that first step and, and, and reach out, either ask for help or uh, check out a new opportunity that could could be uh, providing a better solution for you than what you're doing right now. So please take the moment to, to do that. And lastly, I just want to thank you, the listener, for obviously tuning in and listening to the show. I mean, we wouldn't have a show if it wasn't for you. So we are appreciative of that. And we're happy that you're looking for ways and resources uh, to grow and improve your business. That's vital on this journey. Uh, now is like I always say, like, let's not make sure this becomes digital dust. Let's uh, take what we learned and apply it, uh, re-listen if you need to re-listen it, uh, and make an action plan of what you're going to do from this episode here moving forward. And with that being said, thank you again. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Fitness Business Freedom Show. Take care. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode on the Fitness Business Freedom Show. On behalf of Fitness Revolution and myself, we are thrilled you are looking for ways and resources to move your business forward. And we are honored to be that source for you. If you would like to receive more business building support from us, be sure to head over to the show notes and join our subscriber list and stay on top of all the industry insights that matter most to you. Now, before I close out today's show, if you found this episode beneficial in any way, I just ask you to leave us a simple review to help other gym owners find us and discover this show. Thank you so much, and I will see you on the next episode of the Fitness Business Freedom Show.